What's up, everyone? It's been a while, but I am back with another series on how to make a game in Unity. This time, we're going to be making sort of a space shooter, a shoot 'em up, or as some people like to say, a shmup. Shoot 'em ups are possibly some of the oldest video games in existence. Uh, you're going all the way back to Space Invaders. It had sort of what I would consider a golden age uh, in the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis Bit War days. And the genre has gone in about every direction horizontal, vertical, 3D, you name it. But this is a tutorial, so if you want a more in-depth history, check out a fantastic article I recommend by uh, racketboy.com uh, titled Shmups 101, A Beginner's Guide. Uh, this thing goes over everything from the history as well as various gameplay and design elements that really define the genre. So in this series, we're going to cover creating specifically the horizontal style shoot 'em up similar to games like Gradius, R-Type, if you've played those. And I'll be covering some of the more interesting aspects like enemy ship movements and power-ups, etc. Okay, so in this first video, we're going to get the really boring stuff out of the way, which is really just getting the player ship to move around the screen. Uh, so I thought I'd spice it up with this cool space background, which I found by Googling pixel art space background. There was no artist mentioned, so I don't know who to attribute it to. Uh, but if you're out there, let me know. Uh, I've also thrown in another piece of art, the player ship itself. This is something I actually created myself years ago for a shoot 'em up that I was making back then. <clears throat> Never got finished. Uh, I'll have a link in the description to download the few art assets I'll actually be using in this project. Oh, and before I forget, a quick shout out to John Ocampo for being my first and hopefully not last supporter over on Coffee. You are the man, an absolute legend. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's finally get started. So the first step here is to select 2D when creating the project. All right, once Unity is finally done launching, we're gonna load in our art assets into our assets folder. And then we can start by creating the ship. Let's create a game object called ship. Uh, we're gonna just an empty game object, ship. And then we're gonna add a sub game object that's gonna be a 2D sprite. Uh, doesn't matter what it is, go square. And we'll just call it a sprite. And then we'll replace the sprite with our ship asset. And there it is. Now, one thing I often forget to do off the start is to actually set up the camera how I like it uh, so that uh, zero, zero is in the lower left corner, just makes all the math that much easier. So go ahead and set this from free aspect to 16 by nine, and then take our camera and we'll move its Y position to be the same as this size property. And then we'll set its X position to be uh, 16 ninths of that, uh, which is roughly, I think 8.9. Yeah, I've done this before. All right, and now we can move our ship safely from the lower left corner to somewhere that makes more sense, somewhere here. And as you can see, also, the sprite is very small, uh, and that just has to do with Unity's default sprite sizing. Uh, so I'm going to go to this asset and just set the pixels per unit to something more reasonable, like 30. Uh, hit apply there. Right, and you can see it's kind of blurry, you, so we really want that pixel art look, so we're going to switch the filter mode from bilinear to point. Bam. And that's actually a little too big. I'm going to go with something even smaller, 40. Perfect. And then I'm just gonna drop in my background here, right about there, all right? And then as you can see, it covers everything. So I'm just gonna set this to a good negative 1000, or I guess that's as small as it gets, negative 1000. All right, we're already looking pretty good. We've got our ship in space. All right, so let's actually control it. We're gonna create our first script in this game. Uh, we're gonna just add a component to the ship and call it shipped new. Shipped, ship, new script, create. And then we're gonna go ahead and open that. All right, so we know we're gonna be moving around the screen. So let's start with um, something that'll let us do that, which is our move speed. Set it to something like three. And then we're gonna create some Booleans to, for every action that we're gonna take based on our input. So we'll move up, go down. Move left, move right. Let's go straight into our update and capture those inputs. So move up is going to be input.get key, key code up arrow. And I want people to be able to use the arrow keys or WASD. So W is up. Copy that. 
down, left, right, down is S, left is A, right is D. And then down arrow, left arrow, arrow, and right arrow. And that does a good job of capturing our input every frame. All right, let's go in our fixed update, fixed joint. And here's where we're gonna be doing our actual movement. All right, let's start with the usual, grab our position. And just reset it when we're done, messing with it. You know, it's something I always forget, actually. Let me increment the font size just a little bit. I know some people like that. Uh, I'll go with that for now. All right, so we can start by defining how far we actually want to move this frame, which is just move amount, which is our move speed uh, applied to the delta time, fixed delta time. And move amount is pretty much our move potential based on our move speed. And then our actual move amount is going to be defined by a vector here. And that's going to be based on our input. And you'll see why I'm doing this later. So if move up, move dot y increments by move amount. If move down, decrements. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. X uh, left is negative. Often make that mistake. And we're making sure these are all independent if statements and not if else statements. Otherwise, we could only press one directional key at a time, so we wouldn't be able to move left and up at the same time. And even if you do press up and down at the same time, uh, those two should cancel each other out and produce no movement. So that's fine. Not really a big deal. And then when we're finally done, we can apply this move to our position. All right, let's go back to Unity. And let's see if we got that working. All right, I'm pressing the WASD keys. Now I'm pressing the arrow keys. I'm pressing both at the same time. <clears throat> All good. Uh, one thing that you can notice if you look closely, it's actually very subtle um, and some people miss this, but if I'm moving left and right, it's fine. If I'm moving up and down, it's fine. And then you'll notice, again, it's very subtle, but if I'm moving diagonally, suddenly it's faster, right? And it's not immediately apparent, but, but if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. If I'm incrementing my position this direction every frame and this direction every frame, I'm actually getting the diagonal distance uh, to the right and down, which is further than either one of those distances individually. Now, luckily there's a pretty simple way to fix that using a little bit of math. So if you remember the good old Pythagorean theorem, which is a formula that calculates the hypotenuse of a right triangle, that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So maybe you're thinking like, why are we dealing with triangles? Well, like I said, you have your uh, X directional movement and your Y directional movement. Uh, you can think of that as the base of a right triangle and the side of a right triangle. And then the diagonal movement that I mentioned when you combine those two is the actual hypotenuse of the triangle, the longer side. So we're just going to grab that diagonal movement, check if it's more than we originally thought, and then correct if it is. So I'm just going to get that by directly applying the Pythagorean theorem here. The movement magnitude, which is sort of the overall length of the movement. Let's do a square root. Uh, everybody knows it's um, x squared plus y squared, and then square root it. So we have our move.x plus move dot y times move dot y. That squares it, and then square root. And this is how far we're actually moving. So this is why I separated the move and the move amount earlier. So now, 
if our movement magnitude is actually more than the move amount that we wanted, then we can do something about it. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to figure out just how much of a difference it is by, by getting the ratio of the two. Right, so if the move amount we want is one and the actual move amount that we're doing is two somehow, then this ratio is gonna be a half, which is then what we're gonna scale our actual movement by. And we can just do that easily. Movement times equals the ratio. Save that, go back to Unity. And now we're moving diagonally correctly. And you can kind of see the real evidence of that. I was just showing you earlier, but maybe if I log it, it'll be a little bit more convincing. So let's do a log here. And I've never done a log in my videos. If no one does it, it's a great way to, um, to help yourself debug. Just log the move magnitude, which is the overall movement that we're getting. So let's do it without the correction that we did. Go to our console here, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, right? If I'm just doing one direction at a time, it's 0 0.06. If I'm moving diagonally, you can see it's 0 0.08485, whatever. All right, so then let's our, uh, reapply our correction here. <clears throat> Go again. 0 0.06, 0 0.06, 0 0.0, oh, right. Not our move magnitude, our actual move amount. Um, so let's go ahead and just uh, recalculate our magnitude again after, and then log that and see what we get. 0 0.06, 0 0.06. And 0 0.059999, which is really close to 0 0.06. So I'm going to say that we got it. All right, I can remove this. I remove this. Okay, so the last thing I want to actually introduce here is to set up some boundaries because, well, if you look here, I can just fly right out of the screen because why not? Infinitely. Um, so I'm just going to set up some boundaries somewhere around here, here, um, let's see, probably like one unit from the edge on both, on all sides. So what is this? One, right? Cause that's zero. Uh, this is going to be about 18. So 17. Let's just do 16, uh, 1.5, 1.5, 16. And then the top and bottom are about nine and one. All right. So this is sort of our, we're going to call this our uh, attempted move. So whenever we reach one of those boundaries, we'll just set our position to be uh, at that boundary in the given direction. Uh, so if position.x is uh, less than or equal to, what did I say, 1.5, then position.x just equals 1.5. And then do the same thing. Position.x is greater than or equal to, I think I said 16. Uh, Position.x equals 16. And then if position.y uh, less than 1. And greater than, I think, 9. And that'll just lock us in inside those boundaries. There we go. Got stopped at the top, got stopped at the left, stopped at the bottom. Come on, one more. Stopped on the right. Perfect.
All right, actually one more thing I wanna add just to quickly test boundaries like that, right? Um, I do it just to test, but maybe it's actually a fun game mechanic if you really want to. I'm gonna add another action here. Uh, speed up. And uh, speed up is just gonna be if I'm holding, um, what do I wanna hold? Left shift, left shift. Uh, you know what, or the right shift. So any one of the shift will be a speed up. And then the speed up is actually really easy. I'm just gonna take my move amount, hit speed up, uh, move amount times equals uh, three. That'd be triple my move speed. So let's move around, there we go. Now I can quickly get to those boundaries and test them. Cool, and then I can move around normal and hold shift and move around crazy fast. And maybe that's just something you want in the game. Who knows? Okay, so that concludes the uh, first video in my incredibly long overdue uh, new series on how to make a game in Unity. Shoot'em ups are actually one of my favorite genres, so I'm gonna have a good amount of fun with this one like making the enemies move in interesting patterns and also shooting lots of bullets in all kinds of directions, which the bullets thing is actually gonna be what's in the very next video. So be ready for that. So quickly, just um, thank you again, like the video. It does a lot in terms of YouTube algorithm nonsense and uh, subscribe if you, if you really wanna see the rest of this. Take care guys and cheers.